Hello. Hello, world. Eric Whitaker here. Uh, thrilled to be with all of you today. Welcome into my home, uh, my humble abode. For the next little bit of time, please make my home your home. Oh, <laughs> my wife is listening off screen. That's Laurence, and uh, she can hear me. She's going to be, as we go, uh, she'll also be looking for interesting questions. If any of you have them, she'll be calling them out to me. Um, first, the, the reason we're all here this morning is Virtual Choir 6. <laughs> So we did it. Um, and when I say we, I should say really it's uh, Megan Davies and Claire Long and Damien Dutois, the, the three people behind the scenes who really just moved mountains to make all of this happen over the past couple of weeks. A huge shout out uh, to all three of them. Um, yeah, it's, it's funny. When, when, uh, when we finished Virtual Choir 5, a Deep Field, you know, there were 8,500 singers from 124 countries. And any of you who are part of that piece or have seen it, you know that it's about the deep field image, the NASA deep field image. It's the edge of the known universe. And I kind of thought, okay, I think we've gone as far as we can with the virtual choir. I think we can, we've said what we wanted to say. And then, <laughs> and then the world turned upside down. Um, and uh, it's, I don't know about all of you, but, um, I'm not a fan of, of the COVID crisis. Can, I can definitively say I'm not a fan. <laughs> um, uh, it, it truly sucks. Um, by the way, if you hear some knocking in the background, um, this is my neighbor, Miguel, who has decided that, that Saturday morning is the perfect time to be doing work on his home. <laughs> so, so thank you, Miguel. Um, uh, anyway, it, it, the COVID crisis is just terrible, and it's it's terrible in the in the banal way that we're all stuck at home, and that we're um, you know our, our our world is difficult to navigate now. We wear the mask. I've got my my mask back here, um, and that we're social distancing, which is really difficult. But then, of course, it's difficult on so many deeper levels, um, financially, just the what people around the world are going through right now and are going to continue going through. It's shocking. I never imagined that I would see anything like this in my life. And then even more difficult are people who are genuinely sick and, and dying and, and trying to, ugh, they're struggling with this disease. Anyway, all of this came uh, around what, six weeks ago. Um, and I don't know if any of you were like me, but but I think I spent the first couple of weeks just curled up in the fetal position, just in shock. I couldn't believe what was happening, what what I was seeing, what was around me. I just I couldn't get my bearings. I didn't know what day it was. I didn't I didn't really understand it. It didn't sink in. I, I think genuine shock. And out of that shock, um, I think the glimmers of hope that I started to have were seeing acts of service. That I was I was looking around and seeing all around me, small acts of service, you know, people, people calling elderly people who were alone and, and just trying to connect with them and make sure that they're okay. People delivering groceries, uh, all of the medical workers and, and essential workers who were going above and beyond to help people. And, you know, there was this, this call in the, in England, I'm in Los Angeles, by the way, but I was watching on the news, this call in England uh, for, um, uh, you know, they asked, would there be any volunteers? We, we need people to help, uh, especially young people, anything. And, and in a single day, they had something like over 500,000 people sign up to be volunteers. And this, this kind of outpouring, this, this sense of service, it, it, um, I remember just feeling a glow inside of me, thinking, okay, there it is. There's the center. And that's, that's what I wanted to do when, uh, when we jumped back into virtual choir was to find that glow, that sense of service. And I think the idea was let's write a piece of music for others. Let's, let's do something for others, people who need to hear this music and who need to sing this music. And so as I started to write the poetry, uh, which is very simple, very delicate, I thought, okay, th this is, th this, Let's use singing as a metaphor for a way of living now, which is gently and together and with each other, finding compassion, finding empathy. And then I wrote the poetry first, the lyrics first, and then then the, the music kind of grew naturally out of that feeling. So for me, this virtual choir is very, very different than the past ones that we've done. Each one has been very special to me. 
but I'm hoping that, that the spirit of this one is, is a gift in a way, um, or at least a little bit of medicine, if you will, a little bit of um, social medicine. Um, okay, with that said, I'm seeing all these amazing questions coming by. Baby, have you seen any good questions? Um, hey gang, so so throw in the questions if you have any of them. Laurence is also looking for them. Um, I'm seeing uh, amazingly like pe people in the comments from all over the place. Uh, so far, if you go to the virtual choir page, you can see how many people have signed up. So far, 33,000 uh, people have registered for it. On the site, I think something now like 8,000 people have created profiles from 94 different countries. We've already had, I think, eight or 10 videos submitted already this morning. Um, it's it's overwhelming to me to see all of this happen. Um, since you're all here, maybe I'll talk just a little bit about the piece of music. Um, by the way, so let me play. If I, if I play this, can you all hear that okay out there? We just type in and say, yep, I can hear that, or nope, I can't hear anything. Greens from Detroit. What's up, Detroit? Hey, Darius. Hey, Scotland. Um, yeah, good, good, good. Okay. So starting starting with the piece of music, as I said before, really what I wanted was just simple, just delicate. Um, first, because we're dealing with massive forces. Who knows how many singers will have this time? Yep, I've seen all the yeses. Great, you can hear the piano. So um, as I worked at the piano, I, I had this idea that there were these that the first two notes, well, let, let, me, let me back up if you're okay. So let me go composer nerd for a second. For me, whenever I, I write a piece of music, um, I always start with what I call the golden brick. And for me, the golden brick, it's just a, a term that I've, I coined myself to, to describe. It's a chord or a couple of notes that contain within it all the DNA of the piece that I'm trying to compose. And ideally, if that golden brick is solid enough and full of possibility, then, then an entire piece is, is possible inside of there. And it's not just motivic. It's not just that, so for instance, those two first. It's not just that the first two notes then, and you can see it though, technically, you can see boom, boom. You can see that motive, musical motive, plays out through the entire piece. But it's not just that, it's also there's, there's always kind of a meta idea. So for instance, uh, any of you who have sung a boy and a girl. So a boy and a girl begins stretched out. That's that's the text that they, they first sing. But what the altos and sopranos are doing, they're singing in seconds. Like this. And the idea with stretched out there is that the altos sort of represent the boy, the sopranos represent the girl. And hand in hand, they're going to go through this life together. First, their young love, then the middle of their life, the meaty part of their life, and then finally death together, but always holding hands. So it's not just that it's a musical motive that's the golden brick. It's an essential idea, kind of the governing principle for the whole piece. So with, with, um, with Sing Gently, the idea was very, very simple, just this. And it's, it's incredible. I, I didn't have this metaphor in my mind when I first started writing this. I just had the emotional idea that there was this, these distant things together. So we start here and here, those first two notes of the piano. They're far apart from each other. And then in the middle, there's, there's this glue that kind of connects the two of them together. And you hear that goes through the entire piece, including we get to the very end and the, the basses are here, the tenors are here, the and altos are here. So everybody just in together as one and then we hear we hear that glue in the piano bringing all of that together but as as we were working with the team at 59 productions uh one of the creators there nick brought to my attention this this japanese art form of kintsugi k-i-n-t-s-u-g-i -I, kintsugi and kintsugi is if any of you are familiar with it it's so beautiful. It's the idea that you take a broken piece of pottery and you you glue it together. You heal the the, the pottery with, with gold usually, sometimes silver, but usually a glue that's filled with gold. And in making that, that pot, in, in rebuilding it, not only do you make it stronger, but you make it more beautiful. It's kind of a way of embracing the split between all of these shards of pottery, taking something which was broken 
and mending it. And in its mending, it becomes stronger and more beautiful. And I thought, yes, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. So in a way, we start with these two shards of pottery broken apart. And then that's the glue there. And then that follows us through the entire piece. So when we sing, sing gently, kind of the hook, which is the... Um, So that we're constantly getting this, right? So the piano. Um, and then always we hear these these shards, and the, the, the voices also break up a little bit that way. They're the broken like shards, and then that glue in the piano, that third, always binding them together. Baby, do you have any questions? Are you hearing anything? Yeah, um, in, in general, about people ask, how do I find out what part I am for singing? Because I've never sang in a choir. And then people also, some people say, I have a huge voice, a more operatic voice. How should I mm -hmm. sing? Uh, so maybe about how they, they sing. Technically. Technically, and how they find out what voice part. Perfect. Okay, so the reason I laughed when when my wife read me those questions, I don't know if you can hear her voice, but she said, a lot of people are asking, how do I find out what my part is? And I think this is such the composer in me that I'm like, here was my concept for the piece. You hear the disparate parts. And there are singers out there like, yeah, what part do I sing exactly? <laughs> so so let, let's, let's go back to the beginning. All right, so in, in terms of, if this is your first time singing in a choir, or if you've only sung in choirs, uh, maybe when you were younger, or your your choir curious, um, what what you want to do is you can go to the site to virtual choir six the number six dot com. You register, and on there, um, if you don't read music, that's okay. You can download the sheet music, uh, but if you don't read music, no problem. You can listen to the different. I've made these conductor tracks, and they're conductor tracks that you're going to follow. But really, you'll be able to hear a piano. Uh, and then over the piano, you'll hear all four voices, soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. And th these are four of my favorite singers. They're all in London. They're all members of, of my choir, the Eric Whitaker Singers. And we did all of this remotely. They sang in their parts. So you can hear your part. If you're a soprano, you can listen to your soprano part. You can learn it that way. And you have the choice to hear a soprano alone with just the piano or soprano with the other voices, but soprano highlighted or you can hear all the voices blended together, whichever is best for you to learn it. The way to find out what voice you are is um, just try singing what's comfortable, right? So if you think, okay, the yeah, soprano line sounds nice, sing through it. If it gets to that top bit there and you start thinking, okay, this is this is just too high, um, then then you're probably an alto. Same thing with, with the tenor and bass voices. Also, there's lots of women who sing tenor voices it's, it's not so low, it's kind of in the meat of a tenor range. So, so if there are any women out there who want to sing tenor, all good. And same thing if there are any men out there who want to sing alto or even soprano, really what you want is what sounds comfortable and what sounds best in your voice. There was also this question uh, Laurence was just saying about just how do I sing this? If I'm an opera singer and I've got this huge voice, then, then how do I approach singing this? All right, so, Let's start with the title, Sing Gently. I think that's, that's, a, um, that's a good way to know how to approach this. So no matter what your voice type is like, this is a super delicate piece. And especially when we get to the, the hook, which when you, when you download the music, you'll hear the altos and sopranos sing. And then it's so simple and so delicate, and it's marked PP, which in musical terms means pianissimo. Piano is soft, pianissimo is kind of twice as soft. So it's so delicate, it's almost like a lullaby to a, to a sleeping baby. So even if you've got a big voice, this is the time to kind of rein that in. And you can sing with some vibrato, that's okay, but I'd prefer if you can to kind of smooth that vibrato out. And as my mentor and, um, and dear friend, David Weiler, the man who got me into choir, used to say when I was singing in his choir, he'd say, never louder than lovely. I think that's that's a very good rule for us. More questions, baby? Um, yeah, what's your favorite part or moment in the song? What's my favorite part or moment in the song? Hmm. I think for me, it's, it's both times that we get to the, what I'm calling the hook. 
And I keep calling it the hook because uh, I started in pop music. I didn't come to classical music until I was 18 years old. I joined choir when I was 18. Until then, I was writing pop and rock songs in high school. And the hook is always, you know, it's the part that you remember. And so for me, that hook is the part that I just played this. Sing, sing gently always. And I think, I think the reason it's my favorite is that oftentimes in a hook, the, the hook in a pop song is set, is set apart from everything else, usually because that's where, where, where the banging starts, right? It's where like the, the drop usually comes right before the hook and then boom, that's where it happens. Um, or even back in 80s pop songs where they add more percussion or more synths, it's just a way of setting up the side, the, the, the part of the song. Um, usually the, song, the hook doesn't do what we're doing, which is we kind of build to it. It's a nice full sound. And then the bottom drops out of it. And the hook in this case is the softest, most delicate part. So it's more like we're microscoping down. Most hooks are like, um, you know, boom, turn down for what? That's like, that's the hook. But here we get this small. I, I, I think I love that. And I especially love that when I think about what the virtual choir will be, all these thousands of voices. And instead of this power that we're approaching everything with, we're actually gonna approach it very delicately, uh, very gently, almost a surrender, a soft surrender. Baby. Um, there's a lot of general questions. I know Gene is answering a bunch of them. Thank you, Gene, for um, answering all the questions. So like general questions, where do I find the score? How do I download things? Just how do people join? Yeah. So uh, let's just talk technically for a moment for those people who are out there. So this is pretty straightforward. You're going to go to virtual choir, the number six dot com. Okay. Once you're there, if you haven't registered yet, you'll just register. You'll, you'll put in your email and it'll register you. You'll also see uh, on there, you have the chance, if you want to sign up for my, my mailing list, Eric Whitaker's mailing list. The reason I'm, I'm highlighting that isn't that I'm asking you to join it. It's that we went out of our way to say, listen, this is not spammy. There's no way you're going to be getting advertisements for me or for anything else. If you join this, you have the choice to just be a part of Virtual Choir 6, and that is it. That, that was really important to us. So when you get that email uh, confirming your registration, you click on it, boom, then you go and you set up a very simple profile. And on your profile, it'll ask, you know, um, very basics. Um, one of the questions is, have you been in any of the other virtual choirs before? This was fun for me because I got to click yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I've been a part of all of them. Um, and then that's it. Once you've got that little profile done, then you just go and you you go to, um, uh, I, I think it's join the choir. And, and there you just follow the steps. They're very simple. The first thing you click on, it says download the music. So if you can read music or you want the sheet music, you download it, PDF comes in, boom, there it is right in front of you. Then you go to the next bit and it shows you the different videos. And you can hear, if you're a tenor, oh, I want to listen to the tenor part. I can see Eric's conducting track and I can hear the tenor part with the others quieter behind me. On the YouTube page, there's the, you can hear all the different combinations of voices. Then what you're going to do is all the instructions for how to record your video is pretty simple. You do that, practice for a couple of days or however long you need upload your video and that's it. Uh, May 22nd is the, the end of submissions. So make sure that your video is in by May 22nd. And the reason it's May 22nd is because uh, we need quite a bit of time to make the virtual choir at the end once we get all of your submissions. Um, so just make sure you get it done by May 22nd. Other questions, Bailey? Yeah, your inspiration or motivation for writing this, uh, talk about lyrics and composition. Yeah, so my, my motivation and inspiration. So as I was saying before, I, I was saying that, that this really came out of, out of an idea that um, really from a place of service. Um, and, and I'll also say that, that I've, just on a very personal level, I've been alarmed by the level of vitriol and poison between people, you know, in the media and um, I, it's, it's disconcerting to me. Uh, 
I don't know if you're like me, but what I hope for in a time like this is that everybody says, okay, we're in this together. Let's, let's do this together. Let's work as a team uh, to overcome this. And I feel like there are some voices out there that are, that, that have a different philosophy. The other thing too, is just walking around my neighborhood. You know, when I get to do the, the, the one walk a day for a little exercise or going to the store late at night, you see now when you interact with anybody, they've got their mask, you've got their mask and everybody goes out of their way to walk around each other. Suddenly people, which is the people that are the reason I do what I do. Um, they're, they're the, they're dangerous. There's, there's like a danger to them because they might have the virus. You might have the virus. You don't know. And so there's this approach to people now. And that goes against everything I feel and everything I believe. And so in writing the piece, I wanted to find a way musically to represent this idea. No, let's do this together. We're still, we're still one people. We're still one team. Let's do this together. Truly a sense of compassion for others and empathy and just a softness, just a softness uh, about all of it. With the lyrics, um, yeah, I, I kind of, um, yeah, uh, I tried to write them as simply as possible. I'll tell you something funny. I, I mentioned this in the in the the singer instructional video, but um, typically with virtual choirs, what you want is is you want as few consonants as possible. So to even take that word consonants you hear the k -s -s consonants that's fine if you're a little chamber choir and you're singing that word for instance but if there are ten thousand of us and we're all singing consonants what we get on the back end when we first put the virtual choir together is it sort of sounds like k -s 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 -s. <laughs> my brother-in-law said yesterday it sounds like i'm speaking parcel tongue um and so with virtual choir five we did only oohs and ahs that really works. That's really nice. Uh, there's no consonants at all, just ooh, ah. It's very easy to blend and put together. I started with that idea, trying to use as few consonants as possible when I wrote the lyrics, but then I realized very quickly that what I wanted to say was sing gently. And so at some point I just surrendered to the idea, okay, we're going to have these consonants and we'll, we'll ask each singer to just be very gentle with each of those consonants as well sing gently so instead of sing gently sing gently and then i think when we put that all together it'll it'll sound nice baby more questions i have uh, some information from claire yeah so there's a video in think tank on the website it's from johnny howard of the king singers yep and he talks about how to blend voices and tone how to use vibrato and uh, uh, yeah, yeah. talks about the breath. So, um, yeah, so uh, my, my manager and one of the executive producers on Virtual Choir, Claire Long, has just wrote saying that if you go on the Virtual Choir 6 website, there's also a little spot called Think Tank. And this is super cool. There's a bunch of videos there already talking about all kinds of things related to singing and the Virtual Choir. We're going to be filling that up over the coming weeks with more and more videos. Um, but there's one from Johnny Howard, who's an incredible singer. He's in the King Singers. And he's talking about this very thing for all of you singers out there, how to sing with that, that gentle blended consonants. And my God, if, if, if anybody can speak to what it is to sing in a blended way, it's the King Singers. Yep. So, so check out that video. Um, baby, anything more? Um, maybe two more questions. One, people are asking, are all the videos used? Are all the singers going to be in the choir? Uh, yeah, so the question is, will all the singers be in the choir? Absolutely. So I want to make this super clear for anybody who's doing this for the first time, that there are no auditions. Every single video gets used. We've never turned down a video. The only time that we've ever done that kind of thing is in a few of them, there's a small solo, like in Luke's Arunque, there's this small soprano solo. So we have auditions just for the solo part, but there's no solos in this version. And so if you submit a video, you're in, you're absolutely in. One of the beautiful things about the virtual choir and choirs in general, I have to say, is the more people sing this, it smooths out the rough edges. So if you're singing and you don't have a lot of experience doing this and you go off the rails a little bit, or you sing, even sing a wrong note, it's okay. It's actually okay. Once we get all the voices together, it really comes together. Don't be too self-conscious about that kind of thing. I mean, do your best, of course, to get to get everything right, but it's it's not a, a make or break thing. Um, every video will be used, be assured of that. 
And then a lot of people are asking, will there be a virtual orchestra? <laughs> yeah. So a lot of people are asking, will there be a virtual orchestra? I've been getting this, this question for years. For those of you who are very new to this, uh, the first virtual choir that I made was back in 2009. We launched it in 2010, so 10 years ago. Um, and I made that with a young man named Scotty Haynes. And since then, I've been getting this question, when will you make a virtual orchestra? Okay, so you remember how I was just saying that the more singers you combine, the better it gets? Like it just scales up. Something about 10 soprano sounds great, but a thousand soprano sounds even better. Oboes don't scale as well. <laughs> Sorry, oboes. I don't mean to throw you under the bus, but uh, uh, ain't nobody got time for a thousand oboes all playing at the same time. Um, <laughs> so I know there are lots of people playing, making virtual orchestras now, and and truly, my hat is off to them. And if you're an instrumentalist, I think you should, you should definitely join one of those. They're they're terrific. Um, but for now, I think we'll stick to voices, and in this case, voices of piano. Any more questions, Ben? Still, people are not entirely sure about how to subscribe. So maybe one last time where they can find the info. Yeah, thank you, baby. OK, so for those of you just joining us, I, I want to make sure that, that this is super clear because I know some of you are doing this for the very first time and how to sign up. So what, you're, what you'll do is you'll go to virtualchoir6.com. So the words virtual choir and the number six dot com. You can also find this on my website, ericwhitaker.com. By this point, you can probably just Google search Virtual Choir 6, and it's going to take you there. Then once you're there, you, you're going to register. You just give your email. It's There's no spam at all to the email. We're not going to give your email address to anybody. It'll just be a con conversation between Virtual Choir and you. You'll get an email saying, just confirm this is you. Boom, then you're registered. Then you, you fill out your, your profile. It's very simple. And then you uh, start start making the video. All the instructions are in there in a very super clear way. And then on top of that, there's this amazing uh, community that's there's a uh, we've now got a virtual choir six group on Facebook. I think it's got like 6000 members already. There's you can post on my page or on my Instagram or on Twitter. And somebody, if it's not me, will jump in and answer your technical questions, how to do all of this. So it's it's not only is it pretty straightforward and simple to do, but once you start down the path, you've got a lot of help. You, you can do this. You can absolutely do this. Um, so, so for people who are asking this again, I see it too. May 22nd, that's the date that you've got to make sure that your video is in by May 22nd. That gives you about three weeks. And literally all the, the information people are asking, what do you want in the background? Are there single uh, exercises? Well, all of the information is on that website too. Perfect, baby. Thank you. Uh, this is, by the way, those just joining, my wife is, is, uh, right off screen. That's she's she's looking at all of your all of your comments and questions and and uh, handing them over to me. Thanks, baby. Um, so th so the question is like in terms of how to sing and how to warm up and all of these things. All of that is on the website, and we've got videos from from I mean really beautiful videos that can help you warm up, that teach you about the voice, and we'll be adding to those over the coming weeks as well. Um, everything is there really to help you go from never having sung in a choir before to, to getting all the way to the part where you submit a video. So head on over there, check all of that out. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, hello from Portugal. Portugal! Um, Portugal. Uh, so gang, I will be doing more of these lives uh, throughout the coming weeks. And in fact, I think it's next week. There's even scheduled, if you check out on the site, there's some scheduled live videos. I'll be doing sectionals. So if you're a soprano and you, you want to learn your part, show up on that day and I'll be here, I'll be playing on the piano and I'll, I'll help you with your part. Same thing with altos, same thing tenors, same thing basses. Super simple. Um, more than anything, we're doing this together and we're doing this, uh, it's, it's just a little gift that, that, that we're going to give people who might need to hear it right now. Um, and know that you are not alone. You're not alone in the existential sense and you're not alone on this project. Just start the path, start asking questions, and people will jump in to help. Let's do something really beautiful together, all right? Thank you all so much, and see you soon.